Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. And I do believe that this is the most amount of sessions I've ever done in any series. You know, so far, I don't know how many I've done in this one, but I've done quite a few. I'm sure about 42, 43, something like that. I did do the 30 day relaxation plan. I did a, I think, 34 day relaxation, stress relief of the panic attacks course. Um, the hypnotic buffet, I did about 30 odd of them so far. So this is the, it's not the most of any particular genre that I've done because I've done uh, recorded quite a few relaxation sessions I think about 100, 180 something like that 180 or and also the self-development slash self-help ones so yeah I've done a lot more of them as well but that you know that, that kind of includes so many different things you know so anyway I should just let you know that this session that's aimed at boring you to sleep may cause drowsiness so please only listen to this um, or if you're watching it on video on YouTube or somewhere only watch or listen when you can safely close your eyes because my intention is that you will really, really get bored. And that's it. So for those of you that haven't listened to me ever before, then welcome. Thank you for joining me. And uh, my website, jasonnewland.com, I'll talk about that in a minute, but the uh, a lot of my sessions are available to download instantly uh, free uh, as MP3s, and you can do that. Just go there. There's I've basically got um, I suppose playlists are on there. You just you go to the first page and you can see you just click on which every thing you're interested in and you can just download and you can download as many of what I've got available as you choose. So you can go on there and download thirty or forty MP3s all at the same time. Uh, there's a shopping cart. It's exactly the same way as if you were going to buy stuff, but at the end of it there's nothing to pay it's free and you just click download and the shop or e-shop or e-retail uh, platform that I'm using is called Shopify uh, and although I'm not charging anything for the sessions the mp3 downloads I do pay have to pay them in order to use that platform but I'm quite pleased with how it's going at the moment and in the future I will be making available some premium sessions which you can download at a price but that's not anytime soon and I'm smiling as I say it because it may never happen but I had this little intention in my head not one that I'm necessarily going to follow up, but I think probably about a month or two months ago, 
I started thinking, man, do you hear me? Do you hear me? This guy go. I didn't even. It's like a little bubble, but I didn't mean to make that sound. It's very strange. You know, if you ever do this, what I'm doing, if you ever kind of record yourself and you're the only one in the room and you're just talking, you get very kind of sensitive to the sounds. I very, I find it a very, a bit more um, aware of the noises that come out of my mouth. You know, sometimes I'll say a word and there's a tiny little whistle at the end of it. In fact, if I say the word whistle, 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 can't do it when I try, but when I don't mean to do it, that's when it happens. A bit like farting, really. The really good ones are when you don't intend it to happen. Yeah. Weddings, job interviews, you know, those kind of. And even when you're about. That's the thing about farts is. Sometimes you have to let it out. You know, you can't, can't hold it in forever. But you may be in a position where, a situation where you don't really want to let out a big sound so I've been in plenty of places like that where I've just I mean a job interview is quite a good example and I think maybe the nerves doesn't help either especially if there's two people interviewing me um, when I say interview I'm not talking about a police interview I'm talking about a, not an interrogation you know, like a job interview, something like that. And you have to let the gas out because it's uncomfortable otherwise. But at the same time, it's amazing how we have that natural silencer inside our kind of anus. It's just it's there but we, perhaps we don't use well I, I don't use it very often um, if I could I'd probably put the mouthpiece to a trumpet up there you know just but I don't I mean I don't never have I used to play the bugle and I never ever I don't know I wonder if I did no I never farted into a bugle Bugle, as in not not a puppy, not a dog. Um, uh, uh, it's like a trumpet, but you don't you don't um, do any fingering. You don't you don't have to like push your fingers on any of the buttons at the top. You just you control the sound with your tongue. Um, you kind of it's like doing raspberries so like that, and you can control the sound of the bugle that way. I used to play the bugle when I was in the Sea Cadets. And I quite liked it. I think there was something, I, I wasn't really into musical instruments. But there was a, I suppose the two things I did like about the musical instruments is I had some control because when I was younger I didn't really feel in control of anything when I was a kid you know everyone told me what to do and I didn't really have couldn't have a mind of my own really but when I played a bugle I was in charge of that bugle that bugle was you know did what I told it to do well I didn't do everything I told it to do Sometimes I'd leave it, come back into a bedroom and I'd have to tell it off. So, well, why is the toy still everywhere? I told you to tidy up. 
wouldn't do that but I could control the sound which was the thing to a degree you can't make a bugle sound like a harp you see what I mean there I went p -p -p when I said harp 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 I can I can do harp by going harp harp but that's not harp is it that's harp ha harp to say harp, harp, I'm becoming more conscious of the p at the end, harp. And although with this microphone I have got a, a pop filter, also I've just got to scratch myself. <sighs> I've got a pop filter so that it should, I don't know if it stops the pops. Maybe that's silent. Maybe you can't hear it on the recording. Anyway, I'll move on from that. Yeah, so I used to play the bugle. Uh, oh, the other thing, other than being able to have a, a little bit of control over my life. Um... The other thing I quite liked about the bugle is when I was playing it, even though I knew that I was never, yeah, you know, I never really was going to be the best bugle player in the world. I didn't really, I kind of, I wasn't passionate about it in that way. I wasn't going to change the world and I was fine about that. What I liked about it is I knew that when I was playing it, when I was practicing in my bedroom, that everybody else in my house could hear it. And that they were all being disturbed by my sound, by my noise. And I know it was childish, I was a child. It's a good time to be childish is when you're a child. I'm still childish now, but I don't play the bugle though because I know that would just be very, it wouldn't be good for public relations with, you know, the neighbors. So I would never play a musical instrument that was like loud. Thinking about thinking about playing the guitar uh, or learning the guitar. Although I used to, I used to be able to play the guitar. I think my dad still has nightmares about the uh, bugle. Although he thinks that when I played the violin, it was worse. I think about um, if I've got I've got a, a, like, a friend who has said that it will teach me how to play the guitar but I need to buy a guitar first so and he said well you can get them cheap online and yeah but I, the thing is because of my ears and and you may you may be thinking well, what's it got to do with your ears you use your fingers you're playing it wrong no I'm talking about sound See, if you're cooking something and you want to make sure that it tastes nice at the end of it, otherwise there's no point putting that energy in if it doesn't taste nice. And that's how I kind of feel when it comes to playing a musical instrument or learning to play the guitar. I want a decent instrument so that it sounds nice. So yeah, that kind of, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. Whether I'm going to do it, whether I'm going to, yeah, I don't know. I've not decided yet. I used to have a guitar. 
I'm trying to think how many guitars I've had. I had, oh, I bought a guitar from the catalogue when I was about 14. And I don't know if you know what a catalogue is. I mean, in back like 30 odd years ago, even 20 years ago, we used to have these big, massive catalogues, which would be like this big book, and it'd have hundreds and hundreds, and if not thousands of pages, where you could buy stuff, a bit like Argos. I don't know if you have an Argos where you live, but it's it's a shop where you go in, and it's just full of these catalogues, which you look through, and and that's it. I've, I'm sure, actually, some of them don't have catalogues anymore. They have computer screens. So, yes, you know, basically just going onto the internet inside the store, ordering it, and then just pay, pay for it there, and then just collect it inside the store. So it's, it's good in a sense of um, it's easy, it's fairly quick. But you don't get to you don't get to play with the item before you pay for it. Uh, it's, you know, it's that that's what's missing for me with the internet. You don't get to don't get to physically experience the thing you know if I was going to buy a sofa uh, say if I had the money to buy like a really nice sofa I'd want to go to a sofa shop to a store and I'd like to go in and sit down in the sofa to see if it fits my bottom you know if it if it feels nice and comfortable Even buying something like a, a cup or a mug, sometimes it's nice to, you know, if you, you're going to buy a mug, I bought one with, um, I got a mug, mug <clears throat> that says crazy, crazy ferret man or something on it. Oh, my voice has gone all croaky. I think my voice may be breaking. I'm going through puberty, live on air. Ooh. So, um, it would have been nice. I mean, I bought the mug, and it was nice when I got it through, and it was cool. But it would have been it would have been good to. <clears throat> I feel like I'm losing my voice. I can't believe it. I'm gonna end up whispering. Not because I want to whisper, because that's all I got left. Hopefully not. So it'd be nice to just have seen the mug with the design on it before purchasing it. It's, uh, I think that's one of the, I don't know, like a downfall of the internet is not being able to see stuff, not being able to hold it in your hand. It's just, even things like, this is something I used to do. This is, it might sound bad actually now that I'm saying it out loud, but at Christmas, I'm going back quite a few years. I used to buy people DVDs for Christmas. And what I would do is I'd go into HMV or Virgin or whatever the record store there was and I'd buy the, um, you know, if they had special offers going on, you know three for ten pound or 
five for 20 pound, 60 for 150 pound, I don't know, whatever the special offers were. And I just pick a bunch of films that I'd never seen before. So I take them home, and I do this probably beginning of December. Take them home. If they were already unwrapped, then that's good. But if they were, because some shops, I think years ago, they'd they'd only sell the cases. You'd take the case to the to the cashier, and then they'd get the discount of a, a sleeve and put it in. So if that was the case, then that was good. But then, if it had wrapping on, it was. Um, I was going to say soiled, sealed. If it was sealed with plastic coating, then I'd, I'd un unwrap it. And I'd watch each of the movies. So let's say I bought maybe 10 DVDs. I'd watch them all. And then I'd give them as presents. You can't do that with chocolate. So it's that's why I kind of thought DVDs were a good, a good present. I suppose you can do with chocolate, but I remember it just reminds me years ago. It was uh, December two thousand and six, and I remember that I was going out with a lady. I was in a relationship and it hard to believe maybe but I did once have you know relationships <sighs> and so she I was at her house it was actually a house that she bought for me and her to live in so at that time I was living in Ipswich and I was living in a Buddhist community so I went up to what did we do yeah we went to my dad's yeah that's it I was there for Christmas I stayed at in the Buddhist community for Christmas, even though didn't really celebrate Christmas so much, but because it's a different religion, but it's uh, we did still I still acknowledged it, and it was only me and my friend there. The rest of the people that lived there had gone away somewhere, and they might have told me, but I, I may not have listened. It's a long time ago; it's twelve years ago nearly anyway I went back I went to with her my girlfriend and she had a car and she drove me and we went to my dad's house I think it was on Boxing Day so she spent Christmas with her parents Christmas Day and then Boxing Day she drove down we went down to my dad's and we stayed there for the night and then then what happened oh um, that Boxing Day I remember having a conversation so she was there, and I think my dad had gone to bed, probably had, don't know why, he just went to bed early. And so we were there with my stepmom, and we were just talking about attraction, you know, being attracted to people, and, and my stepmom was saying how, uh, how attracted she was to my dad it was just a, a real really really strong attraction 
And I, I think I remember saying, oh, I wish, wish I had that. Well, you know, I wish I, not towards my dad, obviously, but yeah, I wish I had that to, that kind of feeling towards a woman. I said that to my stepmom. And I don't think my girlfriend was too pleased the way she looked at me. I kind of, I don't know, I kind of forgot what I was saying in a way. Because me and my girlfriend, we, was, we were always arguing. And I've never really been in a relationship that was arguing all the time. But what was strange is we didn't argue when we were at home. There's something, it's like the going outside, there's some kind of weird oxygen thing. The oxygen level changed as we went outside and she started arguing with me. Never really did understand it because I've, I don't, don't normally do arguments, it's not. It's a bit like sitting down and urinating. That's not something I generally do. Unless I'm not sure what's happening. You know, there are times when you just need to sit down and just let whatever happens happen, you know. You know, sometimes it is a case of, well, I have feelings. There's physical sensations in that area, you know, in the pelvic area, but I just sit down to be safe. And it's not the first time that I'd said something in front of my girlfriend that perhaps I shouldn't have said. And I didn't, it wasn't out of malice at all, it was just, it just sort of slipped out of my mouth. And I'm not sure we've all had that situation where something slips out of our mouth. And it's just, I was just being honest, I suppose. It's not always a, a very good excuse, I know, but another thing I remember when I was with her, I had um, a test. I went to the hospital and had, uh, uh, I don't know what the correct term for it is, but STD test. Got tested for everything, really, to make sure that I uh, didn't have any and STDs, yes. Can you imagine, there's nowhere else in the world that you could find a sleep recording that talks about going into a self -help, sex health clinic. This is probably the only one. Lucky it's free really, isn't it? Anyway, perhaps I shouldn't tell you about the the experience, but uh, maybe I went. It was quite weird though, because she insisted that I get tested, yet she didn't get tested. Kind of weird, I just, very strange situation, anyway. So I got tested and it was all right. It is uh, inconclusive on gonorrhea, but everything else was fine. So I told my girlfriend it was all clear. <laughs> I'm joking. No, everything was fine, everything was good. And I remember I, I phoned them up because it took a took about a week or if not lo maybe longer to get the results 
and I was waiting on a result because it, you know, I couldn't, um, uh, I don't know what the right phrasing would be, but there's certain things that uh, a new couple in love wish to do. It's, let's say we couldn't, I couldn't, um, I couldn't order the full meal when I went into restaurants. Yeah, I just did, didn't have... Something about rest. I don't know if it's just me, but... You know, my favourite part about restaurants... Is ultimately, my favourite part. Doesn't matter who I'm with. Doesn't matter, you know, really what's going on. I don't... Not really too interested in social socializing and stuff like that, and being in a public place with lots of strangers as well. You know, it doesn't doesn't make my nipples hard. I'm just saying it's, it doesn't. I don't I'm not really into it. But the one thing I absolutely love about restaurants is the bread rolls. Fresh bread rolls with butter. I love the bread rolls, especially if I've got a glass of wine as well. Absolutely love the bread rolls, and especially when they're round, you know, just a round or I suppose they can be long as well. Not long as in the French stick. That's gone from being a bread roll to a... What's well, a meal, isn't it, really? Or a weapon, depending on what you use it for. I love bread, bread rolls. Oh, I absolutely love them. God, it reminds me. You know, when I... Um, I found just finished my degree this is in 2010 so me and probably maybe five other people maybe maybe more were sitting around a table in a in a restaurant which is part of a hotel which we used to go into sometimes and meet up so we went there to basically to celebrate the ending of the course, the ending of the three year full time degree. And so I was sitting at the table with the other people all also, they were sitting at the table as well, they weren't sitting like in the middle of the floor, you know, with their back to me, they were at the table with me as well, facing me not facing me particularly but because I think it was a round table so I guess technically they're facing maybe one person maybe three it depends how you look at it um, unless of course you include peripheral vision well it might be in a square table it might be in two square tables put together pretty sure it's a round table anyway we we're all there I was eating my bread rolls and I don't remember what I ordered to eat that that hasn't really stuck in my mind because of what happened and so what happened is there was this elderly man and he walked up a couple of steps or one step to where the coats were hanging. I think the toilets might have been in there as well, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't remember whether or not I needed to use a toilet at that particular time. Because the, the restaurant the, the, was in a hotel, and the hotel also had toilets. 
so I don't I don't keep a track of all those moments you know it's uh, I don't think it'd be a very good journal to read but hey um, so what happened is this elderly man I say elderly I would say in his 70s maybe younger maybe older I don't know but and bearing in mind at the time I was 40 so that's 30 years older than me if not older the age isn't really the issue but he started to tremble and he looked like he was in pain and he looked like he was going to fall over so I get my camera out you know, I thought I'll stick this on YouTube no I didn't I got up and I went to I went over and asked him is he okay and he someone else also got up at the same time well I, exa I don't know if it's exactly the same time I didn't have a timer we didn't have different people one person okay Lisa you you time me getting up and Veronica over there you you time Bob as he gets up and let's see whether it's it, it you know it matches it wasn't that's it wasn't planned we didn't, I didn't know what was going to happen and I'm sure that Bob didn't either I don't know if that was his actual name Bob but you know he was he was in the same similar situation to me uh, he just saw this elderly man that looked like he was perhaps in trouble and I thought I actually thought that he was having some kind of a me medical issue so I went over and asked him is he okay and he was rude to me and to the other man as well and I thought oh okay and he was shouting a little bit and I didn't really know what was going on so I just left him so okay so I went back to my table so the people that were with Bob again I don't know if that's his real name could be Steve could be Herbert Could be Elvis. However, I've ne not ever met one person called Elvis in my life, ever. Which surprises me because so many Elvis fans, or there were, you know, back in, you know, when I was a kid. You'd think there'd be like thousands and thousands of little Elvises running around that are now, you know, what are my age in their 50s? But unless there are where you live, but there's maybe you have a live in a road full of Elvises, I don't know. But I, I don't, I've never ever met an Elvis. There was one person years ago that was. He used to hang around the arcade. He was an adult though, so I couldn't quite understand now, thinking back, well, he was hanging around all the children, but he used to have his hair back, a grease back, and everyone called him Elvis. Because he'd, he'd wear a leather, leather jacket, and maybe leather jeans, and but he had his hair that looked like El, you know, a young Elvis. So they called him Elvis. I 
suppose everyone, you know, I suppose it's just, maybe it's a natural thing to do, isn't it? Just give someone a name based on their appearance. If they, you know, I suppose an Elvis would be a natural thing if someone looks like Elvis. I don't think he, he looked like, or he, maybe he did, I can't remember. It's a long time ago. I remember when I was about 20, early 20s, I was working in this place and the canteen, we used to go into the canteen to get our lunch and the lady beyond the canteen used to call me Professor because I was wearing glasses. Professor. The thing is, I quite liked it. The idea that just because I'm wearing glasses means I'm professor. Like um, wearing glasses, some kind of enhancement when well, actually it's a disability. Or correcting a disability, you know, eyesight issues. So yeah, and oh, so back in the restaurant, I I went back to my table, and this man kind of got into an argument with that table. So Bob sat down and I think it was his girlfriend, it could have been his wife, but you know, that's just, that's generalizing, isn't it? It's assuming she could have been his sister. She, she could have just been a good friend. Um, I was sitting at a table with some good friends. None of those were related to me. So I don't really know what her relationship to him was. But that didn't really necessarily seem relevant or important at the time of this particular event occurring. I've got the oven on, by the way. I'm gonna have a nice, what am I gonna have? It's not a stir fry, it's a, like a pasta with some stuff in it mixed together. And uh, got it from Sainsbury's. It's quite nice because it's enough for one person. Uh, it's, it's not frozen, so it's refrigerated. So all I need to do is put it into an oven for 20 minutes. Once the oven's hot. The oven doesn't need to be turned on but for 20 minutes and then it's ready and they see they say you know it says on the on the packaging leave for one minute before serving you couldn't eat it straight away anyway because it's hot so I'm gonna have that for my dinner Really, the plan for tonight is. What is the plan? I don't even know what time it is. Right, it's 20 to 9 in the evening. 20, 30, 40. Yeah, so it's 20 to. Well, it's not 20 to 9, it's, it's 8.48. Oh, no, it's 8.49, no, 8.39, 20.39. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have that after. And I'm going to, when I've finished recording this, I'm going to stick that in the oven. I'm going to watch Big Brother on television. 
and then I eat that food and continue watching Big Brother and I don't know what I'm going to do I guess I upload this and do all the little things that are required for this but it's a, there's a lot less to do now because so I've got a new website and um, everything's a little bit easier now because uh, using Shopify actually simplifies what I need to do. In fact, I don't need to do a lot, you know, just upload it and then that's it. And when people go onto the website and they choose what they want to download, Shopify does everything, you know. It's like a, a shop cart and you can order as much many different things as you want and then just download them it's very very easy it's, I like it I like it a lot so I'm in this restaurant and let's call him Bob you know just for the sake of the of the story it's a real story by the way I'm not I do make stuff up, um, but this is something that I've not made up, it actually happened. So he, the per whoever was at the table with Bob started arguing with him and I said something to that table. I can't remember what it was. It was just like a little funny throwaway line. It wasn't, well, it might not have been funny, but it was funny to me at the time. I think that's the thing with, yeah, those kind of situations. I can't always remember what I've said. So I just carry on with my dinner. So I've got my food in front of me. I'm eating, you know, using the knife and fork, and I've got no idea what I've what I've ordered, but it's probably nice, something nice and yummy, tasty for my tummy, and it was a real treat. It really was a it was a lovely. It's wonderful. So I'm just eating and one of the people that I'm with says look behind you. And I, I look behind me and the man now actually wait a minute, I'm now I think I watched him. Yeah that's it. I don't think she told me but it happened either one of these ways, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not necessarily making it up, but I'm giving you a couple of different endings, an alternative ending. So what basically he did is, this man walked, crept all the way around and hid behind a post and as I looked round when my friend said, look, he had his walking stick raised and he was about to hit me over the head with it. Like a big wooden walking stick and he was gonna hit me with the handle part. And I didn't know what to do because you know I, I thought I weren't going to touch him or I'm going to I'm not sure if I grabbed the walking stick off him or 
I can't remember. It wasn't. I, don't, I didn't. You know. I think the staff came and removed him from the restaurant. But I was just a little bit shocked that, considering that I was actually caring about him and worried and concerned about his well-being which is why I went over to him in the first place just to see if he was okay and he decided to do that you know that's very 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 unusual I have been back there, went back there when I, this is to the, so it's a hotel, it's in town, and it's, they've got all these comfy chairs, but really comfortable chairs, it's a bit like, if you can imagine uh, Sherlock Holmes, sitting down in a chair with Watson that's quite I can't even imagine that though that kind of situation it's quite quite an old it's an old building it's an old old ho old hotel and it's I quite like it I haven't been in there for many years but I used to frequent it there quite frequently. I used to meet up with my classmates from university every now and then and have a few drinks or coffee or something to eat. So I was in there for my graduation. So on the day of my graduation, this was back in, I think it was November, it might be in October, but I think it was November 2010. So I just turned 40. I was 40 in the August. So actually I said I was 40, but earlier, when I'd finished my university course, I was still 39 until the end of August. So I think the course finished in about June, May, May or June time. So I was still 39. Not sure if there was a reason for me to tell you about the ages. Anyway, on my graduation day, I mean that's a whole that's a whole different story. But I went to we did the graduation, and it's not that much I really remember about it. I suppose one of the things I remember is the when I actually went up on stage to collect my um, my degree certificate, I also got awarded, and they they announced it before I got awarded um, a prize, a special prize thing for um, I think it's I think it's an outstanding student or something like that that was that was more based on my continuing to go even though I'd been a bit ill and I continued to to attend and I managed to accomplish the degree I mean, the outstanding student or the prize, I think, should have gone to 
probably someone else, but hey, it went to me. And I think I've got a 25 pound gift voucher. So that was announced before I got on stage. So I went on stage and I got given both the different certificates, the degree and the other one. And I uh, did a little bow, did a little curtsy to the audience. So I think I'm the only person who did that. But it really was a case of just getting on the stage, walking across, shaking hands, and then just, I don't mean like shaking your hands around them, you know, shaking hands with another person. Not like you just washed your hands and realized there's nothing to dry your hands on. Not that kind of shaking. So I got off the stage and just, it was a kind of an unusual, I guess it's just not really my scene. It's not something that I'm really, well, I'd never done before, but no, just wasn't really sure how to, how to respond to the whole thing, really. But I remember we went and had lunch and there was loads of us, loads of us together. And we went back to that restaurant uh, inside the hotel and I had bread rolls, they were lovely. Just love bread rolls. I kind of want a bread roll now, sometimes it's a bit strange, but I think I've got two bread rolls in my cupboard. Pretty sure I definitely do. I know pretty sure and definitely doesn't particularly go into the same sentence. Because pretty sure offers a little bit of room for doubt definitely seems quite definite ish so I'm actually outside Argos and I just got the phone call I just phoned up the STD clinic at the, uh, the hospital and they said that I was all clear everything was fine so I phoned up my girlfriend to let her know the good news and to arrange to meet her as soon as possible to uh, celebrate and it, because over the last week I'd been thinking about my various adventures in you know younger years and maybe not always being as uh, careful as I could have been. And I actually said this to my girlfriend. I said to her, you know what? It's got me thinking now about protection, about uh, awareness and safety and you know even if right now a woman jumps out of the bushes and begs me you know and says come on let's let's get it on I, probably, I might think twice because I don't, you know, don't have any protection on me, and you know, I'm, I, I perhaps wouldn't just go and do it. I think twice about it. And my girlfriend said, "Excuse me." And I repeated it. And then I said, 
when when you know when she would meet up then when and she seemed to go off meeting up with me she didn't seem interested in you know meeting up and then I did a thought oh and I started laughing I was on the phone to her still and she, I said I was I just realized what I said and I just couldn't stop laughing because I just found it so funny that I just talked to my girlfriend about saying that if someone jumped out, some random lady jumped out at the bushes and wanted to be romantic with parts of me, that I would like maybe think twice when really I shouldn't be mentioning that stuff to her. I should be not not mentioning it, I'd do it but you know, not even saying stuff like scenarios like that. I, th I suppose it said something about how well I got on with her because I kind of saw her as a friend. So I didn't. I just kind of said whatever I was, you know, I was thinking. Which isn't always the best thing, I suppose, for me to do, but... I think with me it's a case of just... That's kind of how I am. And... I keep away from people that I can't be like that with. It probably explains why I don't have a girlfriend. I'm a fairly decent person, really, you know. At least decency, at least two out of ten, I'd say. Maybe three. Four at Christmas. Anyway, I'm going to go. I think I've done my... I've done enough for one night. So as, as ever, I'm not, you know, hopefully you've been bored enough to just drift off and I've just talked about nothing. And that's the point of these. Me just talking about nothing at all. Oh, my stomach just did a boink, boink. Which is weird. Okay, I've got three minutes before Big Brother starts. So I'm not going to, if you have fallen asleep, I'm not going to try and wake you up. If you haven't fallen asleep, then, I don't know, just... Do something boring. Listen to listen to someone boring for an hour. If nothing else, I like to think that these sessions can relax you. You feel calm, loose, and just you know, takes your mind off the day. Maybe. So I'm going to go. Thank you very much. Lots of love. Speak to you next time. <laughs>